We finished processing our second wave of tests to help us find our optimal stabilization parameters. We'll save the composition as AC 3.2 Processed Stabilization Testing. In this video, we'll take some time to review the results before we prepare to process the entire clip. Stage 1. The first interval has decent results. There is more error showing up in red on the left sleeve than we are looking for, and the mask shape isn't quite right, and has a bit of jitter towards the end of the interval. Additionally, there is a bit of snap between the final frame in the interval and the next frame in the original cleaned mesh. We are also continuing to see some problems with the hair over the left shoulder. Looking at the second interval, the shape of the hand is pretty off early on. And the shape of the upper leg around frame 96 has some minor problems. The results are still pretty good overall. The final interval still has a little more jiggle and stiffer overall motion in the right sleeve than we'd like. Let's check out stage 2. Overall, the action is okay. The results of this stage are better than the last, but we expect that the next stage will be even better, so we'll just do a quick review of this one. There are some segments where stabilization fails to capture the variations of the surface. In stage 3, the first interval looks great. There are a few small issues, but they're minor discrepancies that shouldn't cause real problems in the long run. There are quite a lot of segments in the second interval, but it does a pretty good job of catching the variations in the surface. For our purposes with this clip, this is an acceptable amount of compression, so it seems like a fair trade. The third interval is pretty good too. These settings seem to get a good result for the entire clip. We're pretty happy with the results from stage 3. We seem pretty close to the right settings for this clip. But because this clip has a lot of complexity, we're going to try one more test before settling on our final parameters in running the whole clip. We'll create an interval and run the first 55 frames of the clip to get a larger representative sample, then we'll review the interval with the texture transfer stage in mind before moving on to our final stabilization pass. We'll create a new stabilization stage and set the parameters from our best stage. Alpha point will bring down to 0 0.035. We'll set the alpha rigid to 125 with carry frame enabled. Alpha smooth to 200. We'll set the match distance limit to 0 0.05 and set the segment max error to 0 0.052 and leave the sample radius factor at 10. We'll hit execute and we can skip ahead to check the results. Let's use the comparison tool again to review the current result for problems that we could have overlooked. Select the load asset and then the stabilized mesh and press the comparison button to enable comparison view. 
We'll adjust our loop selection and play the clip on loop and check it from different angles. Starting with a heat map will allow us to quickly find discrepancies between the stages. Let's set the mode to absolute with a segment max error of 0.025. We'll use the side-by-side -side tool and split view to further review the discrepancies and how they may affect future stages we still need to process. Let's take a quick look playing through the interval a few times. The results of the interval are good but not perfect. Looking at the heat map, we can see that there are still some errors throughout. These errors are fairly minor overall. For some clips, this would probably be well within the range for a successful texture transfer. But with this clip, we need to pay attention to the proximity of the hair to the shoulder. Because these surfaces are less than 0.04 units apart, this clip uses real-world scale, so that's about 4 centimeters. Running texture transfer with enough range to capture these errors could also erroneously project the hair onto her shoulder, so any errors that show up as red spikes in her heat map deserve special attention. After a quick review, it looks like the clip requires a tighter segment max error, but let's examine the interval closely using our heat map tool to try to get a better idea of how much. The space between the actor's arms from frame 2 to 7 and 45 to 54, and importantly the hair floating above the left shoulder from frames 29 to 34 will both pose problems. Additionally, there are some spots on the back of the skirt where the inset folds aren't quite as close as they should be. In the next segment, frames 45 and 53 have similar issues on the skirt, as well as a few hot spots between the arms and under the sleeves. This whole section is pretty close. We can slowly increase the error max of the heat map and try to get a clear idea of how much the mesh is off. We'll look at frame 53 and increase the error max. Starting with 0.03, we can see that there is still some red on the back of the skirt. We'll increase it to 0.035, then 0.04. At that point, we can see that most of the differences sit outside of the error max. Scrubbing through the interval, we can see that aside from the hair and the hanging sleeves, almost all of the problems are inside of that 0.04 range. We want to make sure that the variance is under the distance between the hair and the shoulder in as many cases as possible. We can assume that the same will be the case as we move further into the clip with even more complex motions. Based on these errors, we can make our final adjustments before running the stabilization stage in whole. We know that these settings work well except for minor surface variation, so we can be confident that lowering the error max will preserve what we like about this result while guaranteeing that those surface errors stay within the new error max threshold. The trade-off of getting great surface matches in this clip with all of its complexity is that we will end up with a larger amount of segments. Now that we're pretty confident in our settings, let's set up our final stabilization stage. We'll create the settings from our previous almost there iteration. The alpha point we'll set to 0.02. We'll keep the alpha rigid at 125 with carry frame enabled. Alpha smooth at 200. The match distance limit at 0.05 and the sample radius factor at 10. Plus, Based off of our review, we'll adjust the error max to 0.04 to guarantee less surface variation at the cost of smaller segments. Also, we decreased the alpha point to 0.02 to try to deprioritize closer matches to paired points, which can sometimes add undesirable noise to the surface. Now, when we create a new interval in the stage, it will have the settings we input as the starting parameters. We will look at creating intervals for the rest of the stage. We're going to create a few intervals as multiple intervals will process in parallel, giving much faster results than if we try to submit the whole clip in one interval. Most intervals automatically process in parallel, but in Hollowedit 
The stabilized mesh and template match segments require that multiple intervals be manually created for parallel processing. The boundaries of intervals will automatically create new segments. So if you create too many intervals, there could be a slight reduction of compression. If you have very strict compression targets and your results have a lot of segments at the end of interval boundaries, you can work with larger intervals, but keep in mind that it may increase your processing time. For our data, we'll try to find some places that make sense to break up, where we would expect a segment to end naturally. The most obvious thing to look for would be any time something that was once a contiguous mesh splits into separate parts, like where the hair breaks away from the shoulder, where the hand stops holding the mask. Specifying a frame where the connection should be severed can guarantee that there's a clean break where there should be one. We already have 0 to 55 as a starting point. It makes a good interval stopping right where the hair leaves the shoulder. Quick changes and snaps in the form of the mesh are also logical spots to start or end an interval. We'll make our next interval from frames 56 to 94. Another natural break where our actor's hand is leaving the mask. Breaking at this point makes sense, as it should have its own segment anyway to preserve the shape of the hand. We'll end our next interval at frame 107, when the right hand joins with the actor's hip. We'll make the next ones from frames 108 to 135, where the actor's hands is becoming separate mesh completely from the mask. We're going to continue in this method looking at some key spots that would make sense for a natural starting and stopping point of segments. Let's make intervals at frames 136 to 159, 160 to 180, 181 to 201, 202 to 217, 218 to 251, and 252 to 271. With the actor in this clip, there are lots of opportunities to judge interval lines based off of meshes joining and splitting. If that's not a common occurrence in your clip, some other things to look out for include sudden changes in directionality of motion or major changes in shape. This one is a bit harder to nail down, especially if there's a lot of secondary movement in the fabric. An example of this would be between frames 236 and 237, where the motion of the actor's left elbow changes in direction. These points are uncommon in this performance because of the fluid and sweeping nature of the performer's gestures, so focusing on the changing surface connections makes a lot more sense with this clip. With intervals created for our stage, we will also right-click and clear data for all of the intervals in the stage. Before we start processing, let's save this setup as a new composition. We'll name this one AC4 Stabilization. Now that everything is configured, it's time to execute the intervals and wait for them to complete processing.